The stars were aligned for a promising trilogy with The Force Awakens. And from the trailer for The Last Jedi, it looked like the middle chapter was going to be a home run. But in fact, it turned out to be one of the most hated films in fandom history. How did we get here? I give you The Last Jedi Revisited. The Last Jedi stars Mark Hamill, Daisy Ridley, John Boyega, Oscar Isaac, and is directed by Ryan Johnson. What's up, guys? The Last Jedi. This is a revisited special that I was a little afraid to get to. Uh, just because if you watch my first review, I was glowing. And, and I've been known to do that, and I'm going to explain myself with that reaction. But first off, before I dive deep into this... This year, I have reviewed every single Star Wars movie from Episode 1 all the way to The Force Awakens. Now we're doing The Last Jedi before, hopefully before, hopefully I get this out before Rise of Skywalker. It takes me like a freaking week to edit these things. But The Last Jedi was one that I was really excited to finally get to. And nervous, like I said earlier. Just because there are literally channels on YouTube that are built and have been successful around just slamming this movie, raking it across the coals. I've seen channels, and I'm not gonna call out any names, they would release at least two videos a week with some might call nitpicking, some might call theorizing, whatever you wanna call it, but their, their sole source of monetization on YouTube is The Last Jedi. And it makes me wonder when all this finally dies down, where do these channels go? Some of them are good enough and they thrive and they find something else to discuss. But really, this, this uh, movie has been kind of a, a cash cow for some YouTubers. It really has. And, and I'm not saying that they are lying. I'm not saying that they don't believe what they're saying. I think it's obvious that these people do hate this movie. But I think it's also obvious that they might have found a way to bank off of the toxic nature of this movie. Star Wars in general is a toxic franchise, and it just so happens to be one of my favorites. And to explain my first review on this movie, I believe that for the most part, people, myself included, generally have the same opinion on movies that we're not extremely passionate about. We can be surprised by movies, like going to Hereditary. I saw that movie. I loved it. But certain movies that have a rabid fan base that we are passionate about. I'm very passionate about Star Wars. I'm very passionate about Halloween. I know that when I go into that first movie, my blood is gonna be boiling. And my first reaction of that movie might be amplified. It, that is very, very, very possible. Maybe that's something that I should have said when I started my channel, but I think if you've been on my channel long enough, you start to realize it. That's just the nature of my reviews and how much I love certain franchises, certain movies. So, I, of course, I'm not going to apologize for loving The Last Jedi when I first saw it. I did. I genuinely was caught up in it. And I will say, I think these films, like Halloween 2018, like The Last Jedi, require multiple viewings to finally even things out. For me, anyway. I don't, for, and I'm sure for some of you. Once I've watched these movies a few times and some time has passed, and I can properly rate it against the rest of the franchise then I can finally give my true feelings about the movie uh, and I watched The Last Jedi a good five times now and it is one of those movies that the problems really really do stick out and I'm going to be completely honest with you guys um, I'm not going to jump on the hate train for this movie. I'm going to be completely honest about what I liked and what I didn't like. And what I will say is the thing that people hate the most about this movie from what I've seen, and there's a lot that they hate, is Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker is not my least favorite thing about this movie. I can stand by that. He is one of the characters that I still enjoyed about this movie, and we will dig deeper into his part in this movie. And... There are some things I did like about The Last Jedi still. But as it stands right now, The Last Jedi, I think, is one of those movies that's harder and harder for me to enjoy every time I watch it because of the issues that I have with this movie. 
So anyway, let's get into the plot of The Last Jedi. It picks up pretty much where The Force Awakens left off after they blew up the Starkiller base. The First Order is after uh, the Resistance. And we're having a little bit of mutiny among the ranks because uh, Leia and the crew, they want to just run from this thing. And Poe Dameron wants to fight back. Uh, you know, they, they've taken out a Dreadnought. And really, Poe Dameron is going against orders and he gets in trouble for this. Um, so really, one of my big problems with The Last Jedi is how simple the plot is. And I don't have an issue with pl simple plots if it's entertaining throughout. But when comparing the plot of this movie to all other Star Wars movies, it left a lot to be desired. Really, this is just the Resistance running from the First Order. That's it. And then aside from that, we're on the island with Luke Skywalker. And this is the part where we're excited. We're going to get some training with Rey uh, from Luke Skywalker. This is the stuff that I really wanted out of The Last Jedi. But let's jump over to the Resistance first with Poe Dameron and his, his dealings. At the beginning of the movie, it starts off with, with some comedy. Poe Dameron, he is having an exchange with General Hux. General Hux in this movie is one of my first big issues with it after multiple viewings. When I first saw this in the theater, everybody was laughing. It was a funny little exchange with the mother joke. But do your mama jokes really fit in a Star Wars movie? I know, I don't think they really do. And more importantly, General Hux is supposed to be a very distinguished, very, uh, you know, high up in rank figure, uh, you know, who commands respect. General Hux. Ah, good. Supremely. Ah! And I couldn't help, after repeat viewings, comparing him to Tarkin from A New Hope. Tarkin was a very intimidating man. I mean, his, this was the only character in the franchise that gave orders to Darth Vader, aside from Sidious. You know, this is a guy that commanded respect, and this was a character that I would have loved to have seen in The Last Jedi. Not Tarkin himself, but for Hux, who was pretty established in The Force Awakens, you know, he, he was an intimidating figure when he's preaching to that crowd of stormtroopers. And it reminds you, of course, of like Hitler, you know, and, and the, the German soldiers. So to go from that to Poe Dameron pretty much making General Hux look like a complete buffoon moron, it doesn't kick the movie off to a good start. And so then you got Poe Dameron throughout most of this movie completely being disobedient to uh, General Leia, which this is a, a character that he respected in the previous movie. For him to be so defiant to her, it didn't really make sense to me because it, it kind of goes against uh, his character in the first movie. Poe Dameron was a really fun character in The Force Awakens. You know, he had a little bit of that Han Solo gusto to him. You know, he's the guy that you really just want to hang out with, have a beer with. In this movie, Poe Dameron does get kind of annoying. But eventually, the Resistance ship is blown up. Leia floats out into space like Mary Poppins. I know that, that term has been said quite a bit, but I must admit it is kind of a startling vision just seeing uh, Leia floating there, presumed dead in space, and then she uses the Force to get back. It does fit with her character though because she is, you know, uh, a Skywalker. She does have that power, but visually it does rub you the wrong way, or at least it did me. Now, before we jump over to Luke Skywalker and Ray, I want to touch on Finn. Uh, there's this new character introduced named Rose. I will cut Rose some slack. I didn't find her that annoying, but for me, my big problem with Rose is I just don't care about her really at all. If you look at like the relationship between Han Solo and Princess Leia in the original trilogy, you chew on every single little scene that those two are in together. But for some reason, the chemistry just wasn't that great between Rose and Finn. And then to make matters worse, they make Finn even less likable in this movie because he is fleeing the ship again. He, you know, he is a deserter. And it's hard to really sympathize with deserters, especially if it's something that's been played over and over. Yes, he is going to find Rey to try to find out what's going on with her. But the whole journey with Finn and Rose in this movie could completely be taken out. They end up going to this... Uh, a place called Canto Bite, which is one of the most annoying sequences in all of Star Wars. They have these animals that look like a cross between a deer and a horse. I don't know what these animals look like. Now, the only thing that I liked about the Canto Bite sequence was when they ran into DJ, played by the great Benicio Del Toro. 
I loved this character actually. Um, just because he didn't really pick a side. You know, he was like, whoever pays me, that's all I care about. You know, and, and I do like characters like that. Kind of like Snake Plissken, you know? Snake Plissken didn't give a shit about anything. That's kind of how DJ was. But he does ride the line of good. You know what I mean? Just barely. He does have a little bit of heart in him, and we see it in the last act, but Benicio Del Toro, I have no problem with him in The Last Jedi. Enjoyed him quite a bit, actually. Now, there's another character in this movie that I completely forget every time I watch the movie. That's Admiral Holdo, played by Laura Dern. Laura Dern is a great actress, actually, but for some reason, I found this character so damn annoying. Just because every time she's on the screen, I'm like, why are you here? What are you doing here? You don't really do anything that stands out in the movie. And she's the one character that is just completely forgettable. I'm not going to lie. When I was doing this review, when I was taking my notes, I had to look her up again on IMDb. And it's one of the few times I've seen a movie like five times and I still completely forget the character. That's got to be a bad thing. Now, everything I just said to you that was bad, I actually hate that stuff more than I did Luke Skywalker in this movie. Let's talk about Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker is my favorite character in the Star Wars franchise. One of my all-time favorite characters ever in film history. And the treatment of Luke Skywalker in this movie was just there. He's still very likable. Um, I, I did mention in my, my first review for The Last Jedi that you could compare him to Rambo. This is a character that 30 years later, he's probably going to be a little different. He might even be a little bitter. The choices Ryan Johnson made with the character didn't suit the second chapter of this sequel trilogy. The Force Awakens, nothing happened with Luke Skywalker. We just saw him at the end of the movie. So this was our chance to really just be wowed by the character because even if you look in the expanded universe, Luke Skywalker is one of the most powerful Jedi in all of Star Wars. And to not take advantage of that, to me, is almost a crime. Like I said, I do like Luke Skywalker. Mark Hamill did a great job playing the character. There are a couple of training scenes with Rey. Only two, really, and he was supposed to give her three. But Luke Skywalker himself did a lot of learning throughout this movie. There is that scene where we see Yoda, the Force Ghost of Yoda. He teaches Luke failure. You have to learn to fail in life. And, and his problem in this movie was the fallout between him and uh, Kylo Ren. And... He blames himself for what happened to Kylo Ren. And that is a good lesson to teach in a Star Wars movie, in any movie. Failure is always an interesting thing to deal with. And you can do that in any movie, but when you're doing it in a Star Wars movie, you still want to take advantage of a character like Luke Skywalker, who is really kind of just this ultimate source of good. But guys, if I'm, if I'm being honest, I just really wanted to watch him legitimately fight at the end of the movie. Have this great Jedi battle with... Kylo Ren. Every time I watch the movie, it does hurt to watch this pretty much hologram version of Luke Skywalker, much like the end of uh, Escape from L.A. We just brought up Snake Plissken again. It's just disheartening. It's really painful to watch. And it seems like Luke and Ray, they just don't have that defining moment that you would want between a mentor and a student. They're just constantly bickering with, with each other, at odds with each other throughout. And again, it's frustrating. If this were not a Star Wars movie, I would like Luke Skywalker. I, I, I will admit that. But because it's a Star Wars movie and it's our one chance to really take advantage of one of the greatest characters in human history, uh, it, it sucks. Now, Rey and Kylo Ren, they're having this connection throughout this uh, through the Force, which is kind of strange because neither one of them are actually summoning the Force to talk to the other one. It just kind of happens. And eventually they come together. You have that scene uh, in this big red room with Snoke, which it, behind the scenes is kind of cool that that wasn't CGI. They actually built that whole set. And then finally we get to see Snoke, you know, in form, not in hologram form. And that is one of the best scenes in the movie. I will say that it, it is exciting. When they come together and they take out Snoke, and, and you know, we do get to see how powerful Snoke is because before all that happens, he easily handles Rey. So you could, you could use that as a, you know, a talking point to defend that Rey is not perfect. You know, that is a scene where Rey was zero, no match whatsoever for Snoke at all. I mean, he handled her easily. I keep finding myself defending Rey 
when I don't even mean to, but to just flat out completely say that Rey is perfect like Superman, no, not at all. She does have her flaws. So I don't really find Rey as a Mary Sue, ultimately. I, I would like to know more about her up to this point, but no, I don't find her a Mary Sue. I don't find her annoying. I think she's a likable character. And I love Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren's my favorite character out of this whole trilogy. I'm still completely interested. I was just talking to my son today too, actually, about those two characters. Like, if those two characters were to live in Rise of Skywalker, could we bounce forward 10 years and make a new trilogy based on the two of them? I mean, because they're still young, and they kind of did it with Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia and Han Solo. So why not bounce forward? I don't know. I, I, Rise of Skywalker has a lot uh, of pressure. I, I will say that. And I didn't even touch on this, but the treatment of a movie that hasn't even come out yet and how are these channels that I was, I was talking about at the beginning of the review, how they are already pouncing on the movie before they've even seen it. To me, I think it's kind of disgusting. So anyway, let's jump over to the very end, the last act of this movie. It is a beautifully constructed scene. We're at this uh, planet of Crate, which is this uh, like salt-based planet. And visually, it's very striking. You know, you have these this like red dust when all the, uh, the ships are coming. And it's the First Order. They've caught up with the Resistance. The Resistance is toast. And so we have this showdown. And of course, Luke Skywalker shows up, faces Kylo Ren once and for all at the end. And I pretty much already told you my thoughts on that showdown uh, between the two. All we really get is just Luke Skywalker doing this one little Matrix-like flip back move and then a spin. And that was pretty much it, you know? No lightsabers touch whatsoever. And it almost makes me cry because of the potential of that scene. And Luke Skywalker could have lived and he could have went on to Rise of Skywalker, you know, in living form. And, but you know what? I didn't write the story, but Ryan Johnson wrote this story and it's a weird thing, fandom, because everybody has in their mind what they want out of a movie. And it's not our script. It's not our movie. But somebody should have stepped in and, and maybe had a discussion, a round table with Ryan Johnson and talked about, we're taking some big risks here, guys. Do we really want to do this to Luke Skywalker? You know, they believed in Ryan Johnson, and I give them credit for that. But the guy, I mean, he is going through a lot of shit right now because of what he did with The, the Last Jedi. Um, those that love The Last Jedi, that's great that you do, but you at least got to realize that this movie took some major, major risks. It really did. And uh, I don't think a lot of those risks paid off. Uh, like I said, it's one of those Star Wars movies that the more I watch it, the more I don't like it. And, and, and that's a shame. And I'm not trying to pick a side here. I'm not trying to feed into the toxic nature. I'm just a movie watcher with an opinion. That's it. And I hate to end this review on a down note, but uh, yeah, The Last Jedi, that's pretty much my thoughts on the movie after watching it so many times. For a rating, I really pondered this. Uh, you know what? I'll give it a low humdrum. It does have some nice stuff visually. I do enjoy the Luke Skywalker island portion of the movie the most, funny enough, even though I have major problems with what they did with Luke Skywalker. That is the part that I sit up in my chair and I'm like, okay, now I'm interested. You know, the, the, the space stuff with, with Leia and Holdo and Poe Dameron and all that stuff, that's the part that I, that I hate the most. So anyway, guys, uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to say about The Last Jedi. Let me know in the comments if your opinion on this movie has changed or did you hate it from the first time you saw it. I'm sure there's going to be some like heated discussions in the comments about this one. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day and on Fridays. We do Free Fall Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dums on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. And Drum Dumb out.